You may have just started college, or maybe you're in your second or third or fourth year, and if you're in my position, you're still sitting there wondering, why am I here? <laughs> there are just some days where I'm like, I could be doing so many other things out there instead of sitting in class. Many times you go straight from high school to college, and you don't really have that outside perspective of what is the real world even like? What are you missing out on? And today, I want to look at a few things that I wish I would have known before I went to college. So, before I share my opinion with you, I wanted to share some statistics on the difference between trade school and college, and I mean, depending on what you want to do, what I did right out of high school, I traveled for three years, I got some life experience. So if you want to see what my personal opinion is on all of this, I might even put a little point in the video, and you can just skip to the end if you really wanted to hear what I have to say. Right now I'm going to show you some statistics according to the trends going on in the world and what might be a educated best option for you to actually get a job right out of college or right out of trade school so it seems that rates of people graduating and rates of people actually going into college are going up which is good if people were going into college and they weren't graduating or the rates of graduation went down there'd probably be a different problem that we'd be talking about today what I thought was interesting was seeing the difference between graduation rates between a four-year college and a two-year college and I didn't quite understand that because where I graduated, I went to a community college at first, a two-year college, and the graduation rate was extremely high. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about like 80, 90 percent. But looking at these, seeing a four-year institution average 60 percent graduation rate as opposed to a 31 percent graduation rate at a two-year college, I feel... I don't agree with this, <laughs> but, you know... I, I agree with these statistics in respect to where they came from, so it's just blowing my mind. And again, these statistics are going to be different depending on where you're at. If you're looking at a specific college, they should have these statistics. How many people graduate each year at their college, what classes seem to be the most popular, what teachers seem to be teaching most effectively to their students. Those statistics should be out there. and. If they're not directly on a website of that college, if you're able to talk to somebody in the college, they should be, give you a pretty good idea of how that college functions and how successful you can be there. Moving on to trade schools. If you don't know what trade schools are, a lot of times you will literally get paid to be an apprentice in order to learn the skills necessary to do that trade. And by trade schools, we're talking about plumbing, we're talking about electrical work, we're talking about anything that builds a house, anything where you are probably hanging out in the dirt and you are pounding nails into stuff, you are on your knees, you're also doing intense formulas, mathematic formulas, in order to figure out specific things that you need for your job. And many times, these jobs are offered directly out of high school, especially where I'm from. And what's really interesting is that the trend of people going back into college as well as into trade school, are those percentages are both going up. So it's really cool to see people actually investing in their futures. 13.2 million students enrolled in 2000, and now in 2016, 16.9 million students enrolled in colleges, which is crazy to see a 28% increase. And also, the trade schools, it's saying 9.6 million in 1999 and 16 million in 2014. So that growth was exponential in both of those paths that you can take. But it's interesting, there was a decline in that vocational education, so that trade schools from the 80s and 90s, for a whole decade, there was a huge dip of people being more interested in college, be, feeling like they needed to go get a college degree and potentially not using it and eventually going back into their trade school that they probably would have gone in anyway. It's a form of education that for some reason gets a bad rap, especially in bigger cities. I know a lot of people, if they grow up with a roofing family, like they're, they're putting roofs on houses or they're, they're, they grow up with plumbers or electricians, they grow up in that and they have a certain respect for it. But if you're never really around it, you kind of look at it like 
I mean, why wouldn't I go to college? I don't really know anything about this trade school thing. What's cool is you, many times when I went into my electrical program, they paid me to go to school as well as hourly to be on the job. So I got starting out, I got paid 20 bucks an hour to go be on an oil rig, pretty much making puzzles with electrical wires and understanding the formulas that I needed to know so I wouldn't like electrocute myself and all that kind of great stuff. I don't know enough about it now because I haven't been in that specific trade school in probably like almost 10 years now, but it's insane for me to know that a lot of people won't take the opportunity if they don't really have a direction or a path and they don't know that they could go get paid money to go to school to learn a trade at the same time it's it's interesting so now you know if you've never heard of that before so you can see with these statistics the average cost for a four-year college and this is per year i'm covering it up with my face nine thousand dollars per year on average i mean a lot of colleges especially four-year colleges will money scalp you and i mean twenty thousand thirty thousand dollars per year depending on where you are a two-year college this is about right three thousand to i mean maybe ten thousand dollars per year depending on how many classes you take and again if you're paying nine thousand dollars a year you're looking at i mean Right here it's saying most graduates actually end up paying around $127,000 for their degree. And that is no guarantee that you are going to get a job right out of school. At all. <laughs> that's just saying that that's what your degree costs. That is what it costs for you to learn. With a trade school, you're sitting there at maybe fifteen grand. I mean, when I was taking my classes, I think I paid $2,000 tops. A lot of places, if you are a hard worker and you're willing to learn, they will pay for your schooling almost every time. So on top of not paying so much with your trade school, you are also getting paid to be on the job. And by the time you get your certificate with your trade school, you're more than likely going to be hired by the people who paid for your schooling and or gave you that apprenticeship in the first place. And if not, you could, you could probably meet people through them who will offer you a job. And now you have those skills for a much smaller cost than what you would have with a college degree. All right, so we talked a little bit about money. We talked about college rates. We talked about trade school rates of just people being a part of those programs and how much money you could make depending on where you want to learn. If you look at many trade schools, I mean, I know some plumbers and electricians that could make probably a six figures, I mean, a hundred thousand plus dollars a year because they're, they're busting their butt. They're just going at it. So just a little bit about myself. I started school again when I was 21. Three years of that time in between high school and college, I traveled. I tried about 15 different jobs, whether I was getting fired or whether I was quitting the job because I was just really uninterested in what I was doing or I was just dealing with mental issues in my own head of just figuring out what is this world what is going on so I started college when I was 21 and my journey I take college very very slow I have many other things I own a business I do YouTube videos as much as I possibly can I work as a dance teacher at a dance studio and I teach music to kids I'm all over the place all the time and I that's how I function I cannot possibly stay in one place and I've learned that about myself I love having many part-time jobs and I consider college a part-time job very much so I'm personally right now I'm actually getting ready for graduate school I'm a psychology major and I'm getting ready to take a test called the GRE which is supposedly very daunting and I haven't even started studying for it for <laughs> I haven't even started studying for it yet and it's terrifying and there's all these tests associated with college what I'm getting at is college takes time and everyone's going to be doing it at their own pace I felt that if I took it slower I was able to meet the people necessary to give me the opportunities that I wanted and I was getting the most out of me paying thousands and thousands of dollars and me not having a full-time job outside of college so I could focus on that schooling. There's no 
right or wrong answer with college and trade schools. Everyone's going to have their own opinion and everyone's gonna have their best opportunity for them. A good question to ponder is where do we learn most about ourselves? And the idea that I came across is in social situations. If you are able to actively learn in an environment where you can share your ideas and others share their ideas and then you form new ones because of all the different ideas in the room. That's where I have learned most about myself and I feel like that's where most people are challenged to either grow or to deflect or to at least understand something about society in that respect. Another thing to ponder, you can look up many many videos of a lot of big names who have been successful making technology and making businesses behind their own ideas and they didn't go to college and a lot of times success is not about what you know it's who you know and I know that's a time old cliche saying but no matter how hard I work and how much I have learned in my life if I have not if I don't go and make those connections with other people and see what opportunities they can offer me and what opportunities I can offer them, I'm not gonna go anywhere. I will not go anywhere. And that's what college is. If you don't have certain connections available to you, college is the place to do it. It's a very expensive place to go meet people. You will go learn things. You will learn things about yourself. You will learn about social situations. You'll be challenged. You'll be scared. And it's a very terrifying time for anybody, especially when you're 18 years old, you're off on your own. It's very hard to learn when you're thinking about so many other things on top of schooling and on top of this idea of networking. If you don't know what networking is, that's exactly what we're talking about. It's meeting people in a professional setting. And to understand how to network, it's exhausting. It's if you're going to college and you don't plan to network, I'm telling you, you will be wasting your money. If you're going to college, especially a four year institution, there are so many people there that can give you the opportunities necessary to get you a job out of school. If you're paying $127,000 or whatever that article said, by the end of your degree, hopefully you met enough people to where by the time you get out, you're not worried about how you're gonna pay that back. Because that $127,000, most of us do not have that just on hand. You're taking loans out. You're getting grants as much as you can. You're trying to offset that cost as much as possible by having a job maybe during college. But if you're not networking, if you're not meeting people, I, I'm telling you right now, just don't go to college if you're not ready to network. If you're not ready to go meet people and invest in other people and invest in yourself and other just the ideas around you just, just just wait you know you might not be ready for college or college might not be ready for you you know it's go learn a little bit about life and go get inspired and interested in things and then when you figure out what you want that's when you go to a trade school or a college or a specific schooling for what you want to do when you're going to invest money be willing to invest in yourself and other people. Don't just throw money at a wall and expect things to happen. Because you're, you're not paying for other people to do the work for you. You're paying for you to get the opportunity to go do something. Yeah? If that makes sense? If you're coming out of high school not knowing what you want to do, my best advice is going to be don't throw a bunch of money at something that you think is going to give you something back. When you're ready to go give something to the world, that's when you start investing in what you like and what you care about and what you want to see, a, what change you want to see in the world. That's where you invest your money. And that's where you find the people that you're going to care about and they're going to care about you. So whatever you're going to take out of that, because <laughs> there's many good choices out there. But I think learning about yourself is much more important before you start taking all this money and just expecting I'm gonna punch my microphone before you start expecting the world to be doing all these things for you just go go learn about yourself go learn about the world sometimes that's a little pricey so i mean maybe that's what you need to invest in i don't know all right everybody so this is edit tony i didn't think that i had to say this while i was recording for some reason i didn't write it down because i didn't think that i would get so deep into ideas of investment but looking back at what I said, 
if you are going to invest any large amount of money, please don't make any decisions based off of what I said without consulting an actual financial advisor first. I have no background in financial schooling, so please go talk to at least your parents and they'll recommend somebody for you to talk to, a banker, anybody who has a background in financial advice. I'm just here to tell you not to throw money at a bunch of things. That's that's my main message that I was trying to get out. Take it away, past Tony. If you have any questions, or have any concerns, or you want me to answer any questions, I think in a future video, I'm going to talk about networking a little bit more. Because networking is so, so important. And it took me so many years to understand how much energy it takes just to invest in your community in a higher sense and invest in different activities that you might not even specifically care about but how important it is to invest in your networking opportunities so in a future video i think i'm going to touch on that yeah if you want me to answer anything just let me know and i'll totally get to it i would love to answer questions <laughs> smash the subscribe button thank you all for coming i'll see you in the next video thank you be pulled from side to side as if I'm a piece of clay meant for molding the agenda of this hive of minds we sometimes find comfort inside. But I am not I, and you are no more you than me.